It's a world of pure imagination. <laughs> What's the unboxing? What it be? Well, I don't know. Shut up and see. So this is a really special unboxing. This is one of those books that Paul Suntop has thrown everything he's got into. And not to say he holds back on other books, but you could tell when there's a project that's super special to Paul Suntop, that book comes out <laughs> like it's it, there's no comparison. Now, you'd seen me unbox the other two um, copies of the artist edition of Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. This is my numbered edition. This is like a letter to... I've seen pictures of this everywhere else. Everybody is stunned by this book. Um, and I can't wait to see it because, of course, the pictures... And this video will not do it justice. But on this side of the video, where I'm going to be touching it, oh, it's going to be an exceptional experience. And, of course, this is my final chance to get a golden ticket. <laughs> Uh, the golden tickets have been going. Um, Paul Suntup has had like a web page that shows which tickets are claimed and, and who got them and what they're worth. So my last chance, my last chance. Do I think I got one? I doubt it. But I know I have an incredible book in here. These are the limited premiums, uh, and he hasn't done this for a while. I love these. These are all awesome. And this has a Quentin Blake print on it. Oh, man. That's so cool. Um, and it should have, yes, a bookmark. Now, you'd seen these bookmarks if you saw my last unboxing. And they are the same as the ones that came in the artist edition. But here's the book. <laughs> uh, this tray case opens like the gates of the Wonka factory. What an incredible purple. This purple is amazing. It's so much more vibrant than the purple from The Exorcist. Sorry if I was holding this a little low. I didn't realize um, where I was in the shot because I was transported to a world of pure imagination. So you can see the back and the top and the bottom are wrapped in a slightly different colored cloth. And and the the doors here to the factory open thusly oh wow wow look at that that is velvet um beautiful and i i was so impressed with the artist edition but wow um i'm gonna have to put this down to get the book out <laughs> Oh, this is exquisite. This is really an exquisite production. Wow, look at that. The way it's bound, the bradle binding, I believe that is. Um, in, um, in some other um, pictures, I'd seen that there, was, there were words on the spine, but it looks like he opted for no words. Obviously, what a beautiful, beautiful book. There are the end sheets. Holding this book is, is magic. There are the contents. And now, um, what's exciting about this one is it's signed also by Paul Suntup and uh, Donald Sturrock, who I interviewed. He's a biographer. Look at that. That's so cool. Number 23, signature page. Just a beautiful, absolutely gorgeous production of Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. You, you think you can break off a piece and eat it. 
bam, but you can't, you cannot. And I, and you know what? I wouldn't recommend that, um, to do that. I wouldn't break off a piece because it's not chocolate. Exquisite. And, and like I said, when, when, when Paul adds the design details, um, and he, he really puts all he's got into it. The result is something like you've I've never held before. Beautiful book and uh, enclosure. Look at that. Now, obviously, there are no copies available. This is sold out. There's the tag on the spine. Gold. They are completely sold out. I haven't really seen too many on the secondary, but I, I guarantee they'll pop up. People people do as they are. Um, <laughs> but if, I mean, the leather is soft and buttery leather. Um, if it, I got a cavity right now just looking at this. I got a cavity. <laughs> Something else that's exceptional is the art is printed in color. Um, and that wasn't always the case with all the editions of Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. And yes, there were, there's tons of bonus content in here that makes this such a historical document as well as an exquisite production. Um, top of my collection right now amazing beautiful stuff this one of course is printed letterpress as well just magnificent top top class beautiful stuff and um i'm thrilled i have such a piece of uh publishing history so that's it. You can look on the secondary, hunt around, see what you can find. But um, I wish you well. I wish you well in your journeys. This one's home, and it's it's got a wonderful place here on my shelves. Now, you may or may not know this about me, but I'm not a good liar. And when I do these unboxings, you're getting the, the authentic uh, reaction. I can edit, I can move things around, I can hide things, I can cut things. I could do some things once the video is videoed and I have it in my app and I'm chopping it up. But what you do see is an authentic reaction to whatever I, I get in the mail, whatever I'm holding and talking about. I can't hide it. It is on my face. And, and, um, I wouldn't want to anyway. I don't like to be disingenuous. I don't want to um, put out BS. Definitely. So you may have noticed when I did the unboxing for Charlie, I there's a moment maybe where I, I hold back in um, in some other um, because when I took it out of the box. And I didn't smell it right away. I didn't notice that. I didn't huff the book. But I was thrown off my game big time because I felt this on the back. I don't know if you could see it. Yes, you see that? That line right there. I thought, oh, man. Somebody majorly scratched my copy of Charlie. I'm going to have to send it back. I'm going to have to deal with the holiday shipment and impose upon Paul during a crazy time. He's doing the end of year stuff. He's shipping out a ton of books and it's just baddie. And I, it's the last thing I wanted to do, but I also didn't want him to, um, ship out all the PC copies to people and have no replacement. So I knew I needed to get it on his radar to tell him, ah, Paul, we have an issue. There's a there's a gouge on my book. This isn't good. Oh, I know you wouldn't want me to have that. He doesn't. And I don't want to have that. So I reached out and the first thing he said was, hey, all right, let me, let me take a look at that. He said, send me some pictures because um, sometimes there's scarring is a natural occurrence of these organic materials. It's leather. It's full leather. He goes, I source it from the best... Um, leatherers, tanners, I don't know what they're called, but he sources 
from the best. And yes, they might have things that people could perceive as imperfections, but they are only natural elements of the hide. So I sent him the photos and I said, all right, you know, if you're telling me this, this is a normal occurrence of the material, then that's, that's fine. That's really all I need to know. I don't want a flawed copy. I don't want something that when my children go to sell these books to hand it to somebody and go, oh, yeah, well, you got to knock $300 off of this. Look at that scar. I, I just don't want to hold, hold something on my shelves that is uh, not up to his standards or mine. And he saw the pictures. He said, "Yeah, that that vein, that that scar, is part of the natural leather process, and it's nearly impossible to avoid." What they try to do is, of course, this is the backboard. You wouldn't want it on the front, so they they try to limit the amount. But overall, throughout the whole production, 350 of these, there are going to be a few. He said. They had gone. Th- he had gone through a bunch and discarded ones that had multiple, multiple bad scarring, and you know, try to work with the binder on those. But um, he he said of the ones that actually got shipped, they were all inspected, and he was very happy with the ones that went out. They wouldn't have cut his um, quality assurance otherwise. So. That reassured me, but I wanted to include it here, and I'm going to share pictures at the end so you can see it up close. Of um, If you get a book, and these handcrafted books are hand-bound, they're not made in a factory, right? I mean, there, there are going to be differences in unique elements to materials, like the pig suede, the leathers, uh, the snake skin on um, horns. Things like that are going to have variations and um i'm happy he reassured me and i think that um if there is if you have any doubt as always reach out to paul or whoever you bought the book from the publisher or even a second party and this goes beyond just suntup obviously any publisher should want to support their products and uh and find out is it really a defect um i've seen a lot of posts like that on on Facebook where, where people hold something up and they're like, I don't know, should I be upset about this? Sometimes it comes back and and the other collectors like, no, 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 that's fine. Or, uh, more often than not, no, you, you need to get that straightened out. But, uh, I am relieved and, um, happy and I wanted to include that. So if you get something that you can feel, yes, this is a, a very fluid, organic sort of, uh, situation. It's okay to have doubts because I've never collected anything like these books before. So, um, anyway, I just thought I would share that with you. And uh, (laughs) um, also, enjoy the book. Get the huff on film. It is just an absolute stunner of a book. And I'm going to shelf it happily on my uh, shelf of 23s. Yes. By the way, I rearranged my shelves, added another shelf. So we're going to do a bookshelf tour and you'll get to see it. Yeah. Thanks for sticking around. Um, have, have a bit of chocolate, have a, del- a delicious book and stay frosty. Mm-hmm.